Okay. <clears throat> this word here Actually, have done a little bit of story comedy, haven't you? Have we done some mathematics involving chemistry? Yes. Okay, I had never heard this word till I got to college, and here's my professor using that word, and this is like you know 45 years ago for me. It's like, what's that word? Stoichiometry. That's weird. Have you ever heard that word before? It's weird. Anyway, it's uh, if you do use it, they'll say, Whoa, you're, you're pretty smart. You say, Well, we were doing some stoichiometric problems in chemistry class. They'll say, Whoa. You're going to Harvard next year? Anyway, if you use kind of words like, if you words like that, um, people, they, they've never heard that word either. So stoichiometry is simply the mathematics of chemistry, and it has a lot to do with chemical reactions. Now, so far, we've done some stoichiometry, but it had nothing to do with a chemical reaction. It just had to do with how many grams it take to make a mole, or how many atoms, or <clears throat> how many AMUs. But... It had nothing to do with a chemical reaction. So most of the time when a, a chemistry professor or whatever uses this term, they're probably going to get into the chemical reaction, okay? So what I'm going to do is I think I will show, start with, um, let's start with this right here. Now here's an equation. Um, okay. C3H8. Let's do that. <clears throat> C3H8 is going to react with uh, oxygen and it's going to form <clears throat> what do you think is going to happen what do you think is going to happen uh, here what is it it could be could be might maybe but I think there's another one that fits closer to what's what's another kind of reaction that's probably a little closer to this Keep, I'm looking at your faces now what it it is. <clears throat> we have a carbon-hydrogen uh, fuel, don't we? And we're going to burn it. And so if that's the case, then what should I get for products? If it's complete combustion. Right? H2O and CO2. Very, very good. <clears throat> now, you see that? <clears throat> now, we have to balance it. So let's see. Uh, it's been a little while since you had to balance the equation. See if you can balance this equation. Is it right here on balancing? Okay, let's take a look. Um, you can start with carbon if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'll put a little three here, just a little light three, because I might have to change it. <clears throat> and then I have eight hydrogens. Hey, you know what? I'm not putting an odd number in front of the water, am I? So this might work out all right, even. Now, let's take a look how many oxygens do we have. We have four times one, that's four oxygens, plus six, that's 10. Hmm, what do you think? Does that look pretty good? Yes. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make these a little darker. <clears throat> could you, could everybody here, it will be okay balancing that, right? Okay. Well now, <clears throat> what makes this different than we've ever done before, okay? And I'll show you what makes it different. After chemists figured out what things were made of, what's the empirical formula, what's the molecular formula, the next thing we want to know is how do chemicals react with each other? What, what, is the, what is the number of particles that react with the number of particles? And, and that's what this is about. <clears throat> now, so I'm going to show you, this is something we've never done before. I'm going to pretend that I have 100 grams of this material here. And what I want to know is, how many grams of oxygen will it, um, will it form? What does it need? How many grams of carbon dioxide are going to be produced? And how many grams of water are going to be produced? So that's my question here. <clears throat> Can we figure out the mathematics of this chemical reaction? <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to also tell you that when I was in high school, 
I simply thought balancing equation was some little trick, some little skill that you wanted me to know, but it had no real purpose in chemistry. It was just, hey, can you do that? It's like in math. Can you find the slope of that line? Yes. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. I can find the slope though. It was, what was the purpose of, of them teaching you how to find slope? Do you know what? What was the purpose? Just to say you could do it? But yet the idea of slope is used all over the place, all over the place in math and science. Okay, how about geometry? Oh, nobody ever uses that geometry stuff. Is that right? Is that right? Okay, so sometimes in school you learn a skill, you just don't know what it's gonna be used for. And right now, you're not sure why you had to balance an equation, except that I said, do you know how to do this? Well, guess what? <clears throat> Guess what this is? I'll give you, in the little world, this could mean one molecule of this. And by the way, this, ain't, this is a gas, it's called, I'll just give you the name of it. It's called propane. <clears throat> so every time at home, if you have an outdoor grill and you have one of those tanks, this is what you're doing when you get ready to turn on your grill. You have propane that comes out, <clears throat> it combines with oxygen and it burns and it has a lot of heat. And that's how it works. So this is the combustion of propane. Okay, so ready. <clears throat> if this was in the little tiny world, one molecule of propane would react with, help me, five, five molecules of oxygen. oxygen, and it would produce three molecules, three molecules of carbon dioxide. dioxide and four molecules of water. But I can't visit that world. But how did I figure that out? How did I figure out what was going on in the little world? Because guess what? What world mirrors it? Grams. What is it? Mass. It starts with M. Mole. mole world. How else can you read this equation? Ready? <clears throat> For every one mole. mole of propane, it needs five moles of oxygen to react with it, and it will produce three moles. three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. Now you know why you had to balance the equation. Now. Here's where this is gonna be a weird note taking, okay? And I'm only asking you to do this once. <clears throat> why don't we simply say, if you know how many grams of that, why don't you simply go over here and figure out how many grams that's gonna be? And you say, why not? And I'll show you why. Because there's a big tree in the way. You can't go from grams of propane to grams of oxygen. Why not? There's a huge tree in the way. It's even a, a chemist tree. So you can't, you can't go, and, and the reason I'm doing this weird notes is because I want you to remember the day we had the weird notes and you tell yourself, I can't go from grams of propane to grams of oxygen. Why? Chemistry. There's a tree in the way. Okay. Chemistry. Well, can I go from grams of oxygen to grams of carbon? No. No, you know why? Because there is a brick wall in the way. Okay, there's a brick wall, yes. That's right, okay. And, and so, no, you cannot go from grams of this to grams of that because there's a brick wall in the way, right? Can I go from grams of this? No, because there's a city in the way. It's a big city with skyscrapers and, and, and okay. So the reason that I, I, these are kind of weird notes today is because I want to teach you how to do this thing and I want you to know, don't do that. Yes. Don't try to do that. So here's another reason I want to draw it is, well then how in the world can I go from this <clears throat> to this? If there's a tree in a way, how can I go from this to this? Ooh, I like that. I like what you just said. Wait a minute, wow. You're, you're pretty sharp there, wait a minute. Okay, now watch now, I like what you said. I can go around it, I can go around it, or I can do this. Watch now. All right, I can go where moles live. Oh. And where do moles live? Underground. Yes, <clears throat> okay, so here's what we wanna do, ready? Here is how you do this problem. Step one, watch what I'm doing here. Yeah. Step one, go from grams of propane down and you dig a tunnel. 
and you want to go into moles of C3H8. <clears throat> now wait, now wait now. We've actually done that. Last chapter, <clears throat> you know how to go from grams to moles. But here, this is new. Now we have to dig a tunnel this way. Okay, now, watch now. Step one, say it out loud. Say grams of propane to what? Moles of propane. Okay, now, watch this. Step two, go from moles of propane to what? Moles of oxygen. That's step two. And then step three, go from moles of oxygen to... And if you'll, if you'll remember this stupid notes, if you'll remember these weird notes, you'll know how to do this problem. All right, here's how we're going to do it. Ready? We're going to start out with the given. Some of you are going to love this chapter because you love the math puzzle nature. There's a puzzle nature to it, and some of you are going to love it, all right? So here's where we start. Now, let's say that my goal is to go to here, okay? Let's say my goal is to go to here. What's the first thing I need to do? Get rid of what? Grams of propane and change it to what? Moles of propane. Okay, now you know how to do that from last chapter, don't you? Tell me about propane. One mole of propane is six, oh, one mole of propane is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. By the way, we won't use that very much this chapter. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of propane equals, oh, what's the molar mass? Three times 12. 36 plus eight. Okay. You all right with that? Now, um, I'm not done yet because this is step one. Now, what is step two? Look at the drawing. This is new. What I'm going to show you here, you've never done in your life. You've done that. You have not done this next step, right? Ready? I want to change what? Moles of propane. Get rid of that. And change it into moles of what? Okay. Now, where in the world do you get those numbers? What's that, balance, though? The balance, like what now? What? Balance, like the pot, the pot, the balance. What do you mean about the balance? Like the numbers. What numbers? The ones in front of what are they called? Uh, uh, you are right. You are absolutely correct. Now, I don't know how... That was great insight. So here's what happens. <clears throat> I didn't do this. God set this all up, and he said, <clears throat> one mole that will not react with one mole of that. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He said, if you want to react all that, you better have five moles of oxygen waiting for you. And this right here is called a, a mole ratio. That's a vocabulary word for the next test. Okay. Now, where do you get the mole ratio? They come from the coefficients of the balance equation. And so, good job, Sawyer. Watch this now. In this equation, look at here, for every what? For every one mole of propane, you need what? Five moles of oxygen. Ooh. Oh, by the way, do you have a calculator? Uh, what I need to do is we need to uh, write these answers down as we go, okay? Can everybody tell me what uh, goes down here? And we always do not ever go below three sig figs. You got that? Don't go below three sig figs when you do a soy counting. What do you got? 2.37? 2.27? All right. Is everybody getting 2.27? Yes. Everybody there? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm just going to keep adding um, conversion factors. I, I, I can stop right here. But I don't want to redo the problem again. So guess what? Now, what happens if you go from here to here? All right. Let's try that. What number do you have now? 11 point what? Is everybody getting 11.36? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Now, we're not done yet because this is step two. We're step three. Now, if you'll, I'll tell you, if you can say it in words, you'll know how to do this. Well, I have to change moles of oxygen into what? Grams of oxygen. So change moles of oxygen 
into grams of oxygen. And let's see if you know about that. Uh, one mole of O2 is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of O2 equals? 16. Don't say that. Oh, yeah, 32. 32, you're certified, remember? Okay, anyway, equals uh, that. Now, and let's go ahead and put that in the calculator, see what happens. And Libby, you've been pretty sharp on this. Wait, go ahead. Wait. Now, is everybody getting that or not? Is everybody getting that? Yes. And that's grams of oxygen, right? It's the first time you've ever done anything like this where, oops, where if I tell you you have 100 grams of this, how many grams of that will react with it? And you have to go down in the mole world to figure this out, don't you? <clears throat> All right, now, let's do the other ones. Let's do the other ones. Everybody ready? If, here's, there's good and bad things about stoichiometry. If you do it right, I can figure out every one of these numbers. But what if I make a mistake, like, really early on in the problem? Then I'm going to miss all of them. You ever do that math where you have a domino problem? You miss one part, it makes you miss the next part? That's all I can tell you is just be careful. When you do your calculator, just be careful, okay? Can you do that? All right, now I wanna know, I wanna know everything. I wanna know how many moles of that, how many grams of that. I wanna know how many moles of that, how many grams of that. Now watch what you can do. Here's the beautiful part of it. What's my given? Do you wanna start up here again? I can, but I'll have to repeat myself. Can I go from, can I go from here to here? Yes, I just did that. Can I go from here to here? Yes. I can dig a tunnel. I can dig another mole tunnel here. Can I go from here to here? Yes. Can I go from here to here? Yes. What do you want your, what do you want your given to be? Any of the ones, if you're sure all four of these numbers are correct, I wouldn't pick these. You're just making more work for yourself. So which one do you want to pick? You want to do this? Yes. Okay, let's start that. I hear by Claire, my given is 11, my given is 11.36 moles of what of o2 and okay, watch this is neat this is pretty neat ready how do you go from here to here you ready uh in words what do you want to go from i'm going to go from moles of o2 to what moles of carbon dioxide now you know why i like this method everything that's moles are underground Every, every number down here is mole number, right? If it's not moles, I put it up here. Okay, so now, uh, tell me what you know about moles of O2 and moles of CO2, and this is new, all right? Yes? All right, five moles of O2. For every, in this balance equation, for every five moles of O2. There's three moles across. Yes, the yes. Let's try it. So multiply that and tell me what number goes right here. I happen to know it's going to be smaller than 11.36. It is 6.816. Is that what you got? Okay. Say it again. 6. 6.8. 6. All right. 6.82. Is everybody okay on that? Now. I'll stop there and write that number down, but then I really want to know how many grams of CO2 are going to be formed. So let's try that. All right, how do you do that? You want to change what? Moles of CO2 into grams. So I had to get rid of moles of CO2 and change it to grams of CO2. And we did that last chapter, didn't we? For every one mole of CO2, can you not have those in your ear? Ready? What do you think? 44? Is it 44? Yeah, 44. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do that, and let's figure out what number goes right there. So whatever is in your calculator, you just multiply it times 44. I don't know the answer yet, but I have a question. So like for this right here, are we, if we put this in our calculator, we're putting 3 over 5 times 44 over 1, or are we doing... Well, here's what I would do, okay? If I had this, I'd do this times 3 divided by 5. And that would give me this answer. Yeah. Then I just say times 44. That answer times 44. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Good question. Good question. Sally. All right. Uh, okay on this so far? Every okay so far? All right. Now, what, what number do you have here? How much? 300.1? Okay, now I want you, I want you to, um, I want you to do this box and that. And again, the hardest part is what's your given? What are you going to start with your given? You could start all the way to here and go, woo, woo. You could do that. But what else could you do? Start at 6.82. You could, and you go, whoop, whoop. You could do that too, right? So what do you want to start with your given? You want to do that one? As long as you haven't made a mistake so far, we're going to use that. 6.82 what? <coughs> Moles of... Okay, there we go. All right, I want to know how many moles of water is going to be formed, and I want to know how many grams of water are going to be formed. So let's do that. Okay, wait a minute, hang on. Um, all right, so let's, before you give me the answer, let's make sure everybody knows how to do it. Remember when you're going this, like here, <clears throat> you're going like this, changing moles of that to moles of that, where do you get your numbers? Coefficients. What is it? Coefficients. The coefficients. In this balance equation, for every three moles of carbon dioxide, you'll produce four moles of water so um go ahead matthew what do you have for this number here uh 9.09 uh, raise your hand if you got something like that raise your hand if you did not get something like that okay so now assuming that's correct we want to get rid of moles of water and change it to grams of water all right let's go ahead and do that and oh, do you already have that one done also okay what do you have And so here, every one mole of water is 18 grams of water, right? Is that what you had? Oh, I have, uh, yeah, 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 that was the one. Okay. If you didn't use 18, then that number's wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have. How many people got that? About 163.7, okay. All right, now here's a little magic, okay? Let's talk about chemistry magic. Would you please take these two numbers and add them together and then take these two numbers and add them together. So take these two numbers and add them together. I beat you, 464. I used a calculator on that. Okay. So 464. So we had 464 grams of reactants. How much? I bet it's pretty close to 464, is that right? I'm okay with that. A little rounding, right? Ooh, what's that? What's that fancy thing in the science? The law of conservation mass. of matter or mass. Same thing. See that? So if I start with 464 grams of reactants, I better have 464 grams of products. That's pretty neat. Okay. You guys want a stretch question? Yes. Uh, what was the uh, final answer for the last one? They got seven, but if you got 0.4, it just might be a rounding thing. I wouldn't worry about that. They got 163.7. Okay, yeah, that's what I got. All right. Ready? All right, sit with somebody. I'll give you three minutes to see if you can figure that out. 
What if you had an experiment where you knew a lot of gas is going to be produced and you know your container was only so large, you said, hey, boss, if we do this experiment, there's going to be so much gas produced, it might even break, break the container. So we need to find out um, how, much, how much volume, how many liters of carbon dioxide gas are going to be produced in this experiment. All right, sit with somebody, see if you can figure it out. Oh, we're going to read it. It says, how many liters of CO2, how many liters of CO2 at STP are formed in this reaction? How many liters? Ooh, I see about three or four of you are looking at that blue box over there. Very resourceful. It's okay if you don't know how to do this because it's the first day of doing this, isn't it? You already have it done? Wow, that's good. Do you have it done? Okay. How many liters of carbon dioxide are going to be produced? And don't tell me yet. I'll, I'll let you answer it in just a minute, though. I'm gonna, uh, Carter's going to answer it in just a minute so everybody has a chance to do it. I'll give you a clue. One mole of CO2 equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2 equals 44 grams of CO2 at STP, standard temperature and pressure, equals 22.4 liters. One mole of any gas takes up 22.4 liters of space. So. Carter, what did you start as your given? How much? Ooh, ooh, great. Now, everybody watch. I'm glad you said that. In the ideal world, it's true. One mole of that and five moles of that will produce three moles of that. That's true. That's the ratio in which they react. But how many moles of CO2 do you have in this case? What? 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 How many moles of CO2 do we have in this particular reaction? One. Six One. Six What's that right there? What's that number? Six What's that number right there? In this reaction, how many moles of CO2 were produced? Six you told me. That's what you said. You said this many moles of CO2 were produced. Is that what you said? But that's my given. Okay. One mole of any gas, including CO2, is 22.4 liters. Okay. So. Oh, sorry. So guess what? I don't use three because of coefficients there. That's the ratio in which they react. In this particular case, you don't have three moles of carbon dioxide. You have 6.82, don't you? That's how you, then you use this to set up equivalent. Now, Carter, what's the answer? Liters. Wow, that's a lot. This, this box right here is a liter, right? A two liter bottle is two liters, right? How much gas is gonna be produced here? Whoa, 158, there's 22. Multiply it times four, you get 88. Man, I'd have about six, about six of those boxes full of carbon dioxide gas. You see how chemists might have to know that, you know, if you have a certain kind of container, hey boss, a, a huge amount of gas is gonna be produced. It might burst our container. Okay, we better think about that. What do you think? Wow, can you imagine this is day one in this lesson and I think you understand it? Is that scary? That's scary? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it. Now, am I going to ask you, for, uh, to, when we do the next problem, am I going to ask you to draw the tree or the brick wall? No. Here's what I am going to ask you to do. Always put anything that's not moles, put that up here. Like, see that? See that 152? Uh, I'm going to put that up here. 
liters. I'm gonna put that up here. And what's the only thing I'm gonna put down below it? What's the only, what do these all represent? Moles. And so if someone said to you, well, how many moles of water were made? Oink. Uh, how many moles of oxygen were, were uh, used? Oink. Uh, how many grams of oxygen were used? Oink. You see that? And so is it an organizational thing? If I can get you to organize your data, you can do any of these problems. All right, so we're in a little short on time. Okay. Um, okay. How about questions?